Before we start delving into the modern and contemporary art of the Philippines, let us first define and differentiate the modern and contemporary art in the context of Western and European art. In the study of art, modern does not necessarily mean new. In fact, modern art started in the 1860s during the Industrial Revolution. Contemporary art started in the 1970s. Second, modern art is characterized by the many movements that we know as isms, such as Impressionism, Post-Impressionism, Expressionism, Fauvism, Cubism. Contemporary art, on the other hand, is usually done with the help of technology, like installation art, performance art. When it comes to philosophy, modern art was more on experimenting with styles, techniques, and themes, whereas contemporary art mostly uses art as a vehicle for social commentary. In the Philippines, however, modern art only happened after we were freed from the colonizers. In 1950, when artists who had traveled and studied abroad saw the changing art scene, their theories of art changed as well. Modern art in the Philippines was a reaction against established canons. Note that art movements are usually reactions to the dominant styles or aesthetics before it. For example, Impressionism was a reaction to the prevailing style or technique of realism and post-impressionism was a reaction to the too naturalistic depiction of light and color, so they used vivid colors. In the Philippines, the so-called established canons are the following. First, the Amarsala School. It had become the academy and the academic rule of what art should be. This was established in the UP School of Fine Arts, which, as you remember, was a state university established by the Americans. Fernando Morsolo headed painting, while Guillermo Tolentino headed sculpture. The second is the influence of the 19th century Academia de Dibujo y Pintura, the country's first art school, which was established by the Spaniards in 1823. This was headed by Damián Domingo. This school was a believer of the classical academicism of Europe, which produced dark-toned monochromatic landscapes, and genre and character studies with an air of detachment. The third was the miniaturist school of portrait painting by the elite. This was academic, traditional, elite with a European influence. Modernism in Europe was a reflection of the dynamic spirit of the Industrial Revolution. It was highly experimental and avant-garde a reaction to the fast-growing cities, the highly industrial societies, and of course, World War I. But in the Philippines, the introduction of modern art was not as exciting. Largely because of our political and economic troubles, development was slow. No radical social change was seen in the themes of art. Rural imagery persisted. Traditions that were both romantic and respectful remained. Victorio Idades is the father of Philippine modern art. He took it upon himself to champion this new style of art that he saw in the U.S. and in Paris when he came back to the Philippines. He formed the first group of modern artists composed of himself, Carlos Francisco, and Galo B. Ocampo. They were later known as the Triumvate. Their styles were strongly influenced by Art Nouveau-inspired lines which were curvilinear and decorated with vegetation. This is how they improvised and made distinct the modern art of the Philippines from the rest of the world. In a way, Idades and his group paved the way for a national identity of Philippine art through stylistic experimentation using indigenous artistic sources not copied from academic formulas. The coming of modern art brought about a debate between its avant-garde aesthetics and the established rules of the academy. The strongest voice that opposed the modern movement was Guillermo Tolentino, who felt that he had to uphold the classical canons of beauty, harmony, and proportion. As was the thrust of the academy, art was to be timeless, 
universal, and above human struggle, portraying the eternal ideal of classical philosophy and not contemporary life. However, for Edadis and the modernists, there was a place for the terrible and the ugly in the expression of art. They gave emphasis on the primacy of design and specificity of the artistic language, shunning the creation of art that simply reassures its spectators that the status quo still stands. This was what they believed the academe and academism wanted art to be. Edadists emphasized that modernism did not devalue the masterpieces of classical art. It was rather academism, the mechanical repetition of formulas that needed to be overthrown. So as modernism caught on, the triumvirate extended to the 13 moderns. Each artist interprets in his own way. Basically, modernism in the Philippines can be summed up in these characteristics. Indigenous aesthetics, spatial composition, two-dimensional with no effort at the illusion of volume, visual art was not a copy of reality, but an artist's construct of reality. Five of the most notable modernists aside from Idadis himself were Carlos Francisco, Galubi Ocampo, Vicente Manansala, Cesar Legaspi, and Hernando Ocampo. Carlos Francisco was known for his murals and his indigenization of modern art in the Philippines. His works can be described as two-dimensional and having a spatial composition. Galubi Ocampo was known for his surrealist technique and his flagellant series. Vicente Manansala, who indigenized cubism, was known for his transparent cubism style often using linear decorative patterns. His themes were of post-war urban realities. His jeepney paintings were also well known. Cesar Legaspi was known for his synthetic cubism and transparent cubism. His works had an expressionist and surrealist qualities, dominated by curvilinear lines. Hernando R. Ocampo was known for his stylized abstraction, which was considered as original because it bore little relation to the abstract art from the School of Paris. His themes were of science fiction, fantasy, and stark realities of society. Contemporary art is simply art that is made in the present day. In the interest of history, this starts in 1970. There were again two factions that divided contemporary arts in the Philippines. The first one was Jose Garcia Villas' Art for Art's Sake. He was a poet and a champion for modernism. The second one was Salvador Lopez's proletarian art. He was an essayist and a social realist who created art as a social commentary. The forebears of social realists were members of the 13 moderns, Hernando Ocampo, Cesar Legaspi, and Vicente Manansala. These first-generation social realists responded to the poverty and social inequality that they saw around them through the art that they created. An interesting turn took place in contemporary art. Indigenous materials, which were looked down upon by the art scene, was slowly coming into its own. Orientalized and indigenized practices by modern artists paved the way for contemporary art of the Philippines to recognize, appreciate, and hold in high regard the indigenous use of native materials. With a deeper meaning and an urgent message of social awareness, indigenous materials help deliver the message of contemporary artists, not just to the learned elite few, but also to the masses who understand the images, 
and the vehicle of the images that these artists represent. Ito ay ang tulay ng aming bayan. Ito ay ang iisang daan papasok sa balyan. This is the bridge to our village. It is the only way into Balyan. And it is the only way out. Our bridge is 3 meters wide and 10 meters long. It is our bridge of life. The Spanish soldiers built the bridge after destroying the original bamboo bridge built by my grandfather. Then the U.S. Army engineers wanted to widen it for their military convoys, but they failed because of the strong winds of Amok Mountain nearby. The bridge is used by everybody. It is used by those who make big profits, and it is also used by those who make small profits. I first tried to cross the bridge alone when I was three years old. I am Kidlat Tahimik. I choose my vehicle and I can cross this bridge. If we step back and look at the landscape of Philippine art, one will realize how we have come full circle. The contemporary artist, a descendant of colonization and the struggle for identity, now finds himself utilizing a medium that is truly local, indigenous, even anti-colonial. We look at the products of art today and we see influences of all foreign cultures that our country and people have embraced. And yet, it is distinctly and undeniably Filipino. Dare we say that Philippine art has finally found its own national identity in art. I am Kidlat Tahimik. I choose my vehicle and I can cross all bridges.